Okay, let's get right to it. In this video, we are going to discuss what day trading is like uh, for a beginner and the things to look out for when day trading. I can make a thousand videos of this going over what's required to be a day trader. Literally thousands and thousands of videos. There are so many things you're going to, so many questions to answer. Uh, this is why I encourage you to leave some comments or uh, send me an email, but let's get right to it. We're going to cover my journey thus far, uh, what, how uh, I've arrived here. Everyone's journey is different. Um, so I'm going to just go over my journey real quick. No overnight risk. One of the advantages of day trading, um, trading intraday and after hours or both. You can choose when to trade, how to trade, what days to trade, everything. Uh, the expensive data charges that are out there, but I'll discuss uh, what the charges are for futures, which is what I prefer to trade. The 25,000 day trading rule. Mm. A lot more difficult than swing and long-term trading. This is not for everyone, and it's 90% psychological, 10% skill, and then the equipment costs. Uh, I'm going to go over these things real quick. Like I said, I can make a lot of videos about, and, and then of these subjects, I can make a thousand small videos going over these subjects. There's so much to cover as a day trader, and there's so much that you're going to pick up as you're day trading. So my trading life. So in 2001, I'd worked in a stockbroking firm in Long Island. I wanted to trade. And so I, I applied to a, a uh, brokerage in Long Island and I worked there and I studied for my series seven, but I didn't get to uh, go through with the series seven or, or continue working there. Thankfully I didn't uh, because that's not what I really wanted to do. And I, dis I discovered later in uh, 2007, 2008, that that's really not what I wanted to do. I did not want to be a stockbroker. I wanted to be a trader. But in these years, anyone can tell you, it wasn't easy to be a day trader. Uh, you, had to, <laughs> you had to call your broker. Um, we had phones. I remember having a phone and being able to look up the stock quotes through my phone. But I don't know what life was like for a day trader in 2001. Must have been really tough uh, because, you know, it's, it's the technology just wasn't there. And if it was, it was really expensive. In 2007, it got a lot better. I, I tr day traded in 2008-ish. So, uh, so let me get back to this. So 2001, thankfully, I, I left in 2002 to work in a tech field. But I did do swing trading. Swing trading is really easy to do. Um, it's, it's, it's really easy. You just basically hold it for a couple of days or a couple of weeks and you study a little bit of fundamentals. Uh, you study a little bit of technical charts, uh, technical charting. You figure out where uh, the money's going, which industries, and you invest in the top stocks in those industries. Not hard to do. And um, if you like that, kind of trading uh, where your nerves <laughs> uh, are not invested in, in it, swing trading can be your thing. I returned in 2007 from, from uh, the tech world and I worked at a uh, Wall Street day trading firm. Uh, this is where Wall Street day trader comes because, uh, an, I'm sorry, not a Wall Street day trading firm, a Wall Street uh, brokerage house. <laughs> this is wrong. Uh, this is wrong. This is wrong. Wall Street, yeah, they were, they were stockbrokers. And <laughs> um, so there, I it was wonderful. I learned sales. And uh, a lot of brokerage firms, they leave their cubicles open. So you can hear the guy next to you, hear the guy across the office uh, making their sales. It's, it's wonderful. And right around that time, I remember Apple was starting to take off uh, the iPod was a new thing and and the apple stock was the big thing um and and the, the big sale uh, just briefly if you want to uh, become a stockbroker your day will start at around 5 a.m you would you're going to make a lot of calls a lot of sales develop relationships with clients 
but you're not going to trade. You're not going to really, at least at the firms that I worked, you're not going to make the huge uh, trading decisions. Uh, they have people that are assigned to that, and then they give you the, the tips. They tell you where the firm is going, and this you call your people, and you recommend whatever, they, whatever it is that they tell you. I remember at that time, the iPod was a big, big deal, and uh, Apple was a huge deal, and... and it was good times, but not what I wanted to do. I wanted to trade. I wanted to be a trader. And, um, you know, being a stockbroker has nothing to do with it. Also, I saw that technology was beginning to take over. And the days of a stockbroker, uh, it wasn't going to be, uh, in my opinion, wasn't going to be that glorious anymore. Because, every, I mean, you can just buy a computer and trade on your own. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I became a part-time swing trader. I, I continue to swing trading, which is a lot of fun uh, and, and it's really good. You check your you know stocks once a day and and that's it. At the end of the day, see where it's going. Maybe once every couple of days, you set your stops, you set your, your profit targets. The only bad thing, as I'm going to get into it a little bit later, is when these stocks just, you know, earnings comes and they want to go and take your stops and... Um, I learned day trading in 2008. At that time, YouTube, which is, was just getting started, not a lot of information out there, uh, but there were a lot of books and a lot of videos. These people made, the instructors made a lot of uh, VHS tapes, which they used to sell, a lot of DVDs was the big deal. And, um, I, you know, you would purchase these things, you would download them sometimes. Um, but it wasn't as easy as it is now. Uh, you guys have it really good because if <laughs> I imagine in the 80s how it was. I wasn't trading in the 80s. Uh, but it, it was not as easy. There's no, there was no YouTube uh, back then. There was, there was nothing. You had to really dig in and, and be uh, a good researcher online. So... Uh, there was no trading, just selling. Yeah, well, I just sold at the stockbroking firm. That's nothing. So I wanted to trade. I learned day trading in 2008, uh, and I day traded stocks. I had a, uh, an account with Interactive Brokers, which I, I highly recommend. I started with Scott Trade, uh, but their commission was $7. Interactive Brokers, I believe, is a $1 uh, per trade. Uh, plus whatever other fees they have, but it's, it's really a significant difference. And if you get into day trading stocks, highly, 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 highly recommend interactive brokers. Uh, check them out. Okay, no overnight risk. Of course, you know, for swing traders, I carried an overnight risk. And, you know, like I said, you know, after hours uh, or, or during... Um, the beginning of the opening, uh, 15 minutes, uh, those, are, those are dangerous times. I don't like day trading around those times. But I, I would see huge moves that would take all my stops. Uh, they, you know, and, and it, was, it was really annoying to check and see that they just, to see that humongous wick just go and take every one stop and then the price will retrace back up to where it's headed and you know you missed your you missed your target because they came in and just took your stop that was the most uh, that was the worst part of swing trading uh when when you see that this wick like what what are you doing down here and and they know they know where your stops are um anything can happen at any time uh, you know bad news bad announcement m market can crash and 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 they can take all your stops from all your stocks so typically when you when you trade when you swing trade, you go with the trend as well. If it's a bull market, you 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 go long. You know, you buy and and you, you make your profits as the stocks go up. If it's a bear market, you do the opposite. So that's one of the rules of of swing trading that I used to follow. You know, and the, of course the next morning, the market may not look the same. And whew, yes, I I've yeah my stops have gotten <laughs> stolen. Uh, activated and, and my money has been stolen by by these market makers you're dealing with market makers and they're pretty good at what they do uh, they love your stop and they know your stops 
they know about market makers know everything about trend lines they know they learned uh, uh, technical uh, charting they know everything they they know a lot and they know where the money is and they know where your money is they know where your stop is and as you follow me in these videos I'm gonna show you how to how to fight them a little bit uh, you know how to how to how to be a little like a like a ninja and and just go in st trade in stealth so they don't see your stop and if 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 they do you know they're not going to take that risk to do it you know so uh they they know they know a lot more than people give them credit for okay so we trade intradays after hours or both a lot of people uh, that I know they trade at around, they start trading at around 1 a.m. because this is, you know, they have day jobs. So at around 2 a.m., 1 to 2 a.m., there's a, there's a big volume uh, swing in the, uh, in the markets. And they love trading around that time. They trade till like 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and then they go, they make their money, then they go, they go to work, live a normal uh, life. And uh, you set your schedule, of course, you don't have to trade. I know people that trade uh, from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. I know people that trade the first 15 minute candle, the first 15, uh, the first 15 minutes and the first 30 minutes. A lot of movement, a lot of money being made, even the first five minutes. There's a lot of money being made during that time, but you have to specialize in that. You cannot just go and, and, and swim with the sharks. Um, most traders are, yes, in the regular, at the regular trading hours, of course, uh, because that's the, there's the most movement um, in futures or, or stocks. And, of course, you can trade whatever day of the week you wish. You can trade from anywhere you wish. That's the uh, beginning line of a book very famous trading book if you hit your goals on monday of course you can take the rest of the week off uh, everyone has different goals but let's say your goal is to make a thousand a week and you monday is turned out to be a really wonderful day for you you know take the rest of the week off you don't really have to stress it uh, for the rest of the week you had a great week take the rest of the week off and relax and there's always liquidity of course um, during uh, regular trading hours and that's a that's a great thing that's something we don't often have in the crypto market uh, and uh, be careful with some stocks and when it comes to the subject of liquidity uh, i don't recommend you trade penny stocks i i don't recommend it that takes a skill of its own and uh, unless you are very skilled in that unless you find a good instructor and a good person to tail uh, you know, just uh, be careful with the liquidity on, on over-the-counter and penny stocks. Okay, um, one drawdown f uh, when it comes to day trading is the expensive data charges. I love futures. I love futures. I'm going to make uh, videos about futures, a lot of videos about futures, because there are a lot of advantages to trading futures. And I remember paying a lot of money for data charges. I used a company called TradeStation uh, when I when I began um, day trading, and there are there were platform charges, there was data charges, and I paid the prop firms that I used to day trade with before I raised money to trade on my own uh, account, my own day trading account. Lot of charges. There were lots and lots of charges. I remember paying about I think it was four hundred combined. It was four to six hundred dollars a month. I, on charges, just just data charges, platform charges, everything added up. So you know, imagine starting the month at a six hundred dollar loss. You know, so futures is the way to go. And if you're going to trade futures, I the brokerage I would recommend, which is better than an interactive brokers, I think, in my opinion, from my experience, is Ninja Trader. They have free charting, so you can learn. And they also have, they've been around for a while. They've been around since 07. I don't know if they've been around before that. That's when, that's when I got introduced to a Ninja Trader. And uh, they're wonderful. They're free and they're very cheap uh, to, to trade, low commissions. Stock data fees are much higher. Oh, yes, they're, they're high. Uh, platform charges, we covered that. Some prop firms, 
Uh, they charge you additional fees. Let's see, swing investor. Yeah, so if you're a, an investor or a swing trader, you don't pay the data charges because these things are free. The, um, the, the, your data is going to be free because you, you're not going to need intraday data. That's, that's something you don't want to pay for. You're not going to need it. You want to know what happened at 4 p.m. and what happened at 9.30 a.m. That's all you're concerned about. So, but here we're we're uh, day traders. People watching the, this, I'm I'm going to assume you're a day trader. So be careful with those data fees and consider uh, futures. Consider, you know, maybe uh, trading futures, the ES, the YM. You know, they're they're pretty easy to trade, and you can save a lot of money. And also, one thing about futures compared to stocks, the same rules apply. The same technical rules apply. Uh, volume, uh, times, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just that futures is much easier. A 25K day trader rule. This is what keeps most people from day trading. This 25K rule, it does not apply to futures. I think the minimum to open up a futures account and trade is $1,000. And um, this was created, as far as I understand, when I researched this uh, in a long, long time ago, 10 years ago, you know, I was curious about this. And, you know, from what I heard, it was because people, you know, they would they would blow their accounts and then blame the market for blowing their accounts. They would go and, and start with $5,000, blow it in a week or two, and then go to the SEC, hey, hey, this is not fair. Uh, this is gambling and shouldn't be allowed because I lost all my money and it's the market's fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> so I, I guess the SEC decided that um, you know we're gonna we're gonna go and unless you have twenty five thousand dollars set aside to lose. Now this is tricky because it's not twenty five thousand. You need to keep your account above twenty five thousand. So twenty five thousand to get you started. But if your account goes under by a dollar, you're going to get a notice from your brokerage. So most people think, um, most people recommend you start with 50000 or maybe 100000 uh, when you trade. But it is a law that you must have at least $25,000 if you're going to day trade uh, as a, for, for a living. Uh, it prevents many, many people from day trading. Uh, but again, there's there there are if you really want to trade stocks, if stocks is your thing, there are many other options for for uh, where you can go and day trade. Otherwise, you know, consider futures. This is much more difficult than investing in swing trading because uh, the, everything it's it's its own uh, has its own set of rules and and boundaries. So investing. I would say you're probably looking mostly at the fundamentals. If you want to put your money in a company for, for the next five years, you're kind of looking at the fundamentals, uh, I would say mostly. In swing trading, you're looking at the technicals mostly, uh, not so much the fundamentals. Day trading, you could not care less about the fundamentals. <laughs> you don't care. You just need the uh, ticker symbol you know you need to make sure that it's hitting your your uh your lines and and you're in so very very different uh day trading introduces a psychological edge you know we we mostly scalp all day long with scalping scalping means you go in and you get out you make you make your two hundred dollars you go in you get in and out quickly and you and you make your profits slowly um so yeah, the, in, in my opinion, the psychological edge is 90 to 95%. Uh, uh, it's 90% psychological. And 95% of people that attempt day trading fail at it. So if you are successful at day trading or you've been successful, you are at the top 5%, 3 to 5% that actually can call yourselves uh, day traders. It's really difficult to accomplish, very difficult. Um, because it's it's easy to learn, but it's difficult to master. It can be scary to watch a price go against you in real time. There are going to be many, many occasions where you're going to get into a position 
and it's just going to move against you and it's going to look like the worst decision you've made in your life. I had the uh, perfect reverse golden touch where, and <laughs> I remember everyone got in, I got in maybe 30 seconds later and as soon as I would put my money down, it, it would just reverse on me and it would happen I would say for days, you know, my last 20, 30 trades, it, it would, the same thing would happen. I would go long and the price will immediately drop. I'll go short, the price will immediately go up. And, you know, you, you have to have persistence and a lot of patience because we experience that reverse golden touch effect. We all do. It's not for everyone. Only invest what you can afford to lose. Don't don't use your lunch money for this. Uh, don't quit your day job to day trade. Do not quit your day job to day trade. Don't do it. Not yet. You know, get your finances in order and put put a little bit of money, uh, you know, on on the side for this. But practice, practice, practice with real money. Um, the if if you're not trading with real money. It's not the same, the trading with real or, or uh, 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 fake money. Um, we call them uh, SIM accounts. So in a SIM account, the SIM accounts are good to run back tests and to test your strategies to see if they work. But it's, it's, it's a different monster when, you have, when, you, when your money's on the line, completely differently. Um, so don't quit your day job in, initially. Over time, as you as you see that your discipline is successful, you know, then then you can consider it. Um, a lot of people don't understand that what it is to work by uh, to work for yourself. They expect a paycheck every Thursday or every Friday, and sometimes that paycheck is not going to come. Sometimes you're going to be down uh, some money, some weeks if you if you get into this. So just understand that you have to be disciplined. You have to keep, keep, you're running a business. You have to keep strict monetary rules and, and do not violate those rules. Uh, if, you know, like I, uh, you have to keep a journal. That's one thing that a lot of successful traders that I met, they do. They, they keep a journal. Now we have computers. Now we have screen recorders. You can, you can record the screen and narrate what you did. A lot of YouTubers make videos going over the trades or the mistakes that they made uh, but you have to do that you have to keep a journal and be disciplined about that journal and go over it and and make sure your numbers are good and you must be cool under pressure a lot of times as we mentioned before that that stock or futures contract is going to move against you and you have to follow your rules you have to be cool you have to not panic and just you know, trust your system, whatever system it is that you have. 90% psychological. You know, when I went to Online Trading Academy, one thing that I noticed they didn't have, I don't know, I haven't been there uh, since 2012, I think, but I, I, I went there to, to take a refresher course uh, because I took the initial course and it's lifetime membership. So... Um, one thing I noticed, they didn't have psychological, they didn't have, they, they, they didn't focus on, on the, the psychological aspect of trading. At least they didn't in 2012. Maybe they do now, but it's so important, in my opinion, when, you, when you're day trading. Um, if you, the worst thing that can happen to you, and it happened to me, uh, it's when you begin trading, you're going to be a genius. You're going to make some great trades and you're going to make a lot of money in the beginning, the first couple of trades. That's the worst thing that can happen to you because you're gonna, your ego is going to balloon. So this has nothing to do with intellect. If, if it did, then, you know, doctors would be the best traders. And, you know, if you know about the doctors that decide to trade, you know, they, they blow their accounts um, a lot of times and they're, you know, they're, they're really smart people. I consider them to be really, really the top, you know, of, of the food chain when it comes to uh, being smart and making uh, good rational decisions. Uh, but they they fail a lot. No, many doctors who, who lost a lot of accounts. Uh, so 
it has nothing to do with being smart. It has nothing to do with learning. No, it's psychology. You controlling yourself and your emotions. Uh, yeah, many smart people trade and lose consistently. You must train and develop an edge and calmness when you trade. Be in the zone. Trading in the zone is a book I highly recommend. Uh, you have to have an edge. An edge is a system that you develop, that you're comfortable with, that is that is profitable. Okay? E even if your system is profitable 20% of the time, as long as your losses are down here and your gains are up here, uh, for instance, if you would lose $10 and you would when you your losing trades will be ten dollars your winning trades will be a hundred dollars doesn't matter if you're if you're right only what 20 percent of the time you, you're still going to come out on top but you must have an edge you must have a system and if your mind is not in the right place you would lose a lot of people you know when uh, i worked at the prop firms i met a lot of people there and and uh, these prop firms you can trade remotely uh, from your home, you would just log into your computer. But for the best experience, if you if you are going to trade in one of these places, I would say go to their offices and trade there and rent a cubicle and trade there and talk to the other traders. You see a lot of crazy stuff. I see people yelling at the computer, throwing stuff. I mean, just going nuts. So your mind has to be in the right place. You go go to yoga class, take some meditation classes, some Tai Chi in the morning, you know. <laughs> go to your uh, local Chinatown and, and take, some, take some meditation courses, some Tai Chi courses. And, um, but you, you must be calm under pressure. You must be calm. Do not get upset. Learn how not to get upset under pressure. And equipment costs. Now, my equipment costs are very different because I like to be mobile. So what I did was I purchased this computer when I began day trading and I, I purchased a computer that I, that I got to choose the components in the computer, how much memory it had, the motherboard, the hard drive. And over the years, I've been upgrading the same computer and it's really powerful, 24 uh, gigs of memory. It, it's, it, for, for this, is really good. So what I do is I log in with a program called Jump Desktop. And I log in from anywhere in the world, and that's how I trade. Get a comfortable desk. Some traders say don't sit when you're trading. If you look up, uh, it's, it's better for you. So if, you're if your desk is high, so they say that if you look down, when you trade, you'll become more sad. You're more prone to being sad. But if you look up, if your screen is higher and makes your head tilt up upwards, then you know you'll have you'll be happier. You'll feel happier. These little little tricks. Also, the color of your screen plays a big part. I, you know, you can tell when a trader uh, is is has been doing this for a while because they're their chart is not going to be white. They're not going to have a white chart. They're going to have mostly like a dark gray or um, a dark colored chart with earthy, earthy tones on the chart. Get a comfortable desk. Ergonomic desk is, is good, but I trade for my laptop because I connect to my uh, desktop remotely, so I don't need a desk anywhere. High-speed internet is a must. No DSL, no, no dial-ups. So, and then... Uh, you need a trading platform. That's it. Ninja Trader, uh, their platform. I purchased it, and I have a lifetime platform with Ninja Trader, which is a great thing. I, I bought it a long time ago, and I uh, I use it to this day, and it's 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 really uh, wonderful. Uh, you can lease it as well, but wherever you trade, most likely they're going to charge you some sort of platform uh, fee. Interactive brokers. I day traded with interactive brokers, and I remember connecting Ninja Trader to interactive brokers. And interactive brokers was my data feed, and Ninja. I would trade with the Ninja Trader um, with using Ninja Trader charts because it's it's beautiful. C hash and you know uh, it's the language and and it's it's uh, 
it's a very recognized language in the programming world. So I hope this was helpful to you. Leave comments below, like the video if uh, you found it informative. And until next time, happy trading.